This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. My talk is on releasing WordPress or releasing themes on WordPress.org. Um, my name is Kelly Duan. I'm a code wrangler at Automatic, and I work on Vault Press, which is a backup system, a backup plugin for your .org sites. So you could also use that. Um, referencing the last talk. <laughs> so, um, like I said, tonight we're going to talk about releasing themes on WordPress.org. So I've released a few themes um, for public download. These are a few of them, uh, with one of them that isn't quite there yet. So it's in the middle of the process that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, and all of these were designed by Mel, who's in the audience. She's an awesome designer for a developer like me who is not capable of making a site from scratch. <laughs> uh, first of all, what's the theme repo? Um, it's the place on WordPress.org where you go to download themes. So anyone can submit a theme, and then they are reviewed by volunteers who uh, have to follow a set of guidelines. So you know that when you get themes from this place, that they've been reviewed for um, code standards, uh, general quality. So like they're above average. You're going to get like, you're going to get uh, a theme that's like been looked at more than once. Um, you can also uh, refine uh, and search through the themes that are listed there. And then um, every day, I think it is now, there's a handful of random featured themes that you can check out. So if you're just into figuring out what theme you should use, you can go and find a random one from there. Um, you can also rate and review themes on the theme repo. And so you can see which themes are higher rated. Uh, and then um, you can also get support on, uh, on this, this site, too, on all the themes that are here have support forums. So throughout the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about underscores. That's underscore s. It's a starter theme that's um, developed by the community. It has a lot of basic theme structure in place, uh, so including a lot of best practices for accessibility and responsive, um, the, like the code part of responsive. Um, it's consist It's constantly being improved upon, so you should at least watch the repo. It's on GitHub for the uh, latest in theme development best practices. This is what it looks like if you just tried to install it. Um, it's not meant to be used just on its own. Uh, it just has the bare bones uh, functionality of a WordPress theme. So then it's up to you to kind of style it. So OK, you're building your theme. And you want to release it for public use. So anyone who goes to WordPress.org will be able to get your theme and download it. Um, so this means that anyone can and will use it. It's not just you using it anymore, and it's not just the client you trained one-on-one. -on -one. So to have a good, successful theme, you need to think about that. So that means that you need to do things like translating or making your theme um, available to be translated. So this is also called L10N or I18N, which are shortened forms of localization and internationalization, because those are very long words you just smush them together, and then the 10 is the number of letters between the first two letters and the 18 is in internationalization. Um, that sort of thing is pretty common. Uh, anyway, so doing this is uh, really just a matter of using a few functions whenever you're um, displaying content to a user. So you don't even need to be the one speaking tons of languages to translate it. Uh, someone translated one of my themes into Russian and pass the translation files back to me, and now I have a theme that's available to use in Russian. I hope it says the right things. Um, <laughs> but I suppose anyone else could also go in and improve that translation if it doesn't. So accessibility is also something that you need to think about. Uh, and again, it does the letter shortening thing. Uh, it's also called A11Y. Uh, so this is important and can be thought of in even a universal design kind of way. Um, 
It's easy to say that you've never had a blind user on your website, although I doubt that that's true. Uh, but it's harder to deny the things uh, that the things make that the things that make websites uh, more accessible uh, also make them easier to use for everyone. Anyway, accessibility for themes is usually a matter of um, making sure your HTML is semantic and valid uh, and not redundant, um, which is also good for SEO, as it turns out. Um, a quick test of how accessible your theme is is to try navigating through it with your keyboard. Um, for more thorough testing, you can use WebAIM. Uh, they have a tool for testing the accessibility of your site if it's live. And they also have uh, Chrome and Firefox extensions if it's local. Um, so that's webaim.com, -E I think. Um, but I'll put links to everything in the Meetup um, comments. Um, if you have a Mac and you want to test, you could enable VoiceOver to test your site using a screen reader. Uh, which was really intense the first time I did it. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. Um, documentation is also very important. If you're releasing a theme to the general public, um, they might not even really know WordPress, and now they're going to install your theme. If you have a lot of complex options, then they're going to need to know, how do I set that up? Uh, so if you don't want to spend your first three weeks after you release your theme answering everyone's questions, you should write up a little documentation. If you have any extra functionality, prepare a how-to for it. Assume very little WordPress knowledge. Um, linking out to the codex is a great way to cut down on your writing while still providing useful resources. Uh, if you find yourself thinking that you don't need docs, ask someone to set up a site using your theme and don't give them any help. Um, and just watch them try to figure out what it is. And then cry. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't cry. <laughs> OK, so now you have a theme. You've tested it across all browsers that you want to support. It's still up in the air as to what browsers you need to support. There's no guidelines on that, I don't think. Um, but you should probably try to support all the latest. Um, but use your best judgment. Anyway, uh, you have support for translations. You have tested the accessibility, and you've written up your documentation. So how do you get it onto WordPress.org? So you need to do a few more things. Um, you need to take a screenshot of your theme right after activation. Um, it's, the requirements for the screenshot are that it just looks um, basically how it will look um, right after you activate it with minimal setup. Um, so don't use like a heavily photoshopped logo or advertisement. Uh, that'll be rejected. So you need to create a readme file with maybe some documentation, but the most important thing is the license info. Everything that you upload to WordPress.org has to be GPL compatible. Uh, and then in your style.css, there's a new header that you'll use called tags, uh, which is how, it, how WordPress knows what to filter your theme as. So when you go looking on WordPress.org slash themes, I said before there's all those filters. These tags that you label your theme with tell the site which things that it should um, show up under. Uh, so it lists out things like what colors you use. So if someone's looking for a black theme, then you might, they might not want your bright white and light blue theme. Um, but you also can say if you support custom background uh, images or if you do something fun for post formats. Um, most of these features are pretty expected at this point, but it's still good to explicitly state that you have them. The accessibility ready tag is the only one that is a special case. Uh, if you add this to your theme, it'll have to go through a second review by the accessibility team to make sure you follow the theme guidelines, which are also, um, so all of the guidelines are on um, make.wordpress.org slash themes. Um, so like make WordPress themes. Um, and then there's a handbook there that has a link to all of the guidelines written down. I'm not going to read through all of them because that would be I don't know, boring, long. So um, anyway, so now we are ready to upload your theme. So you will need to zip up your theme, then submit it using the form on the site. Uh, this scans your theme. And if it passes, it creates a ticket for you in track. Uh, the theme review track, it's a, it's a 
separate install. If you know anything about working with core uh, bug reporting, they use something called track. And this is the same thing, but a theme specific um, install. So now you're in the queue for a review. So you'll wait um, for a little while. Since all of the reviewers are volunteers, I think some companies donate some time to reviewers, like for reviewers, but most of everyone is volunteers. You'll need to wait a little while. Um, the current wait time when I wrote this, which is I think about the same, uh, is about four to five weeks uh, before you'll th your theme will get reviewed. But um, if you want to help out, then you should join the theme review team and then you can pick up themes and the more themes you review while yours is in the queue, the faster yours will get up to the top. So like I said, there are guidelines that you would need to pass. Um, the theme repo on WordPress.org is not a free-for-all. Uh, you're not allowed to just upload anything, whatever you want. You can't upload that site for your client because it doesn't make sense for it to be for everyone. Um, so while it's not as curated as some would like, um, all the themes in the past few years have been reviewed. The reviews are meant to catch security issues, license issues, and also to give feedback on code, design, and accessibility. There's a plugin called Theme Check that you can download onto your own site while you're in development and um, run it against your theme, and it will tell you um, all of the same checks that are automatically run when you upload. So you can find out early if something is not quite right in your theme. I usually start checking my themes when I'm about three quarters done, uh, and it'll almost always alert me to something I missed. Um, Code sniffer is sort of an extra credit. Um, so you can use uh, underscores rule set to check your theme against the WordPress code standards. Um, I find that themes that use the code standards are a lot easier for volunteers to read and therefore get reviewed faster. Uh, we had a presentation last time about code sniffer, which was ages ago now, um, but it should be on YouTube if you're interested. You can go watch it. So some common issues. <laughs> So like I was saying, rather than go through all of the guidelines, I'll just go through some common ones. A few months ago, the reviewers were asked for some of the issues they saw most frequently, and these were some of the results. So licensing, um, like I said, it's really important that all of your, your uh, all the resources you include in your theme should be GPL compatible. Um, so this includes any JavaScript libraries, CSS frameworks, or images. Uh, off the top of my head, MIT and CC0 are GPL compatible, and you'll need to identify all of the licensing for any resources you use, and you'll be asked to change if any of them are incompatible. Well, um, you'll need to write those in your README, and in your review, you'll be asked to change. So there are some rules around what scripts and styles, what like JavaScript and CSS uh, things you can use are. Um, you can't have any minified JavaScript unless you have the unminified source file along with it. Um, in my opinion, this isn't part of the guidelines, you should just not have minified JavaScript. Let, um, let the person who's using the site um, minify it themselves with like a plugin or something if they're interested. But um, anyway, uh, what, the, what really needs to be shown is that you're not inserting anything malicious into that minified JavaScript. Um, since it's not human readable, you can't quite tell um, what's going on. You can include SAS or LESS files, um, but it's not required, and I usually don't. I just use the, the final CSS file. And all of this should be enqueued in a function, uh, not linked in header.php. Um, this is just kind of supporting core's best practices. and. Um, Examples of that would be if you were to look at underscores, you'd see that they're enqueuing it in functions.php, which then runs in WordPress behind the scenes to output it into your header. Sorry, my wasn't updating. Um, so unused files. Skip one. So on the unused files, you should delete any unneeded code. Uh, all code in a theme needs to be reviewed. And having a file you're not using just adds time to your review. Uh, and it bloats your theme. If you want to be able to undo your changes, you should just use version control. 
Commenting out code is not a good way to save your code. So think about your reviewer when uh, when uh, writing your theme, and it'll also help that you document your code better. So PHP errors, um, your theme shouldn't generate them. Uh, it seems obvious, but it can be hard to test for if you're not um, using WP debug. So check out the codex for how to enable debugging in WP config, or uh, use a plugin like debug bar. JavaScript errors are also important to check for, um, and you can check while, uh, while working on your site by leaving your browser console open. Um, I think most browsers should report JavaScript errors there. So this is the security slide. Um, all of this deals with handling input and output in your theme. If you have any user customizable features, um, such as color schemes or any user entered content, then uh, you need to follow these steps. Sanitization is to clean up uh, your data for storage. The um, validation is to make sure that your data is what you expect it to be. And then escaping is cleaning up your data for display. All of these things prevent users from inserting bad things into your site. Um, the good news is that if you're using the customizer, a lot of security is already taken care of for you. Uh, but you'll still need to worry about all of this. Um, Anyway, security is pretty much a talk in and of itself. Uh, and there have been plenty on, um, in WordCamps before uh, and meetups before. So if you go and go to wordpress.tv, you can check out the security tag for much more involved security talks. But keeping in mind that these things are things you need to do when you're uh, setting up a theme or a plugin. So translations and text domains. Um, all themes now are required to be translation ready, um, which I talked about before. It just means that you're using the right functions um, so that core behind the scenes can translate it. Uh, so these are the strange underscored functions if you looked at code before, uh, like underscore e and underscore underscore. Um, there are a few others, but those are the most common. And then you'll also need your text domain, which is the kind of the flag that tells uh, WordPress which file to use of all of your translations. So it's the theme specific name so that it, uh, WordPress knows that like this came from this theme and so I should use this theme's translation. Basically it's a unique word that should be the theme slug. You can also get dinged for not using for functions correctly. Um, this one's a little hard to talk about abstractly, um, but it's things like getting content directly from the debate database versus using the content uh, or the other WordPress uh, template tags. Uh, so make sure you know what functions are available to you. You can check out the template tags page on the codex if you're not sure. So that's anything like getting author data or um, Pretty much any time you want to output data from WordPress, there's probably a core function to do it, and you don't need to grab it from the database. All right, so you've gone through your review, and now your theme has some issues. It's bound to happen, especially if you're working alone. Just fix them and re-upload. Uh, you can ask your reviewer questions if you need to. Uh, they're happy to share resources if you're not sure how to do what they ask. Um, to update your theme, don't use the uh, don't use the repo. It's not actually like subversion that we have access to, even though it is subversion. Uh, what you'll do is you'll upload using that same fo uh, using that same form that you started with, and um, behind the scenes, it'll use your theme name. And as long as you have a new version number, it'll attach the theme to the same ticket as an update. Just make sure to um, respond to your reviewer within seven days or your ticket will be closed for inactivity and then you're back to the beginning, which could mean another four to five weeks of waiting. Okay, so you've gone through all of that, uh, you fixed all of your problems, and the reviewer says you're approved. So now a theme admin needs to come through and double check the reviewer's work just to make sure um, and to label it live. If your reviewer missed something, you're back a step. Uh, the admin will say what needs to be fixed and you'll make a new update. Again, this should be uh, within seven days. You should see a response within seven days. Um, if a reviewer claimed your ticket 
and hasn't said anything in seven days, you can also ping um, any admins about it, um, and they should be able to assign you a new reviewer who's actually active. So the seven days thing goes both ways. So you're live. Your theme passed. Uh, the theme admin passed your theme, and now you're live. It's time to throw a party because you have a publicly available theme, and now you get to support it. You shouldn't ignore support. You did release this theme, and there will be maintenance work involved. Um, this doesn't mean that people are entitled to your time. Uh, so figure out how much time you can spend and do your best to answer as many support questions in that time uh, as you can. Uh, direct people to other sources if possible. Uh, for example, a style customization request could be answered with a link to a CSS tutorial. Support requests are also good for being notified of bugs or feature requests that you might want to add in future versions. The update process is similar. Um, oh, the update process is similar even if you need to update to a live version. So you'll do the same thing. You'll make your fixes, uh, re-upload using that same form. Um, the system will scan and use your theme name. And updates usually go much faster than full reviews. But it does still depend on how much you've changed. So that's my presentation. Any questions? Can we connect uh, uh, WordPress from database? I mean, uh, from the database, can we upload something? I mean, extract from the database and then put it in the WordPress? I don't understand what you're asking. Can we connect WordPress, WordPress to the database? WordPress, yeah, WordPress has a database, yes. Yeah. WordPress has one database? Yes. So I'm, I'm just asking whether uh, we can connect to another other, other database like Oracle and Netflix. Oh, um, I don't know about interacting with anything that isn't MySQL. I think that that's difficult. <laughs> there, there are some plugins that you can use to do that, mm -hmm. um, but it usually takes some, some level of effort. Okay. Um, at some point, the library that was used to connect uh, to abstract the database layer, um, changes are made to make it specific to MySQL, so we do have additional functionality. Two versions back. Yeah, you should, so it's two versions back is what you need to support um, so, what are we, 4.1 now? So, 3.9, three, three, 40, and 4.1. <laughs> yeah, if you want to use that, it's recommended to use that and create a fallback. Um, if you wanted to check out underscores, you could see the code that they're using to create the fallback. So, it's in an SVN repo, but you never actually update the SVN repo? No, you use the, the file uploader. You don't have okay. access to the SVN repo. Okay. Can you give us an overview of the things you've um, designed? You just tell us something about them. Um, I mean, the things that you put on, the, on WordPress. Sure. Do you get back on the probably fast to do profile that we're just that. Yes, that's what I was go going for. So these are some of the themes. Well, these are all of the themes that uh, I've got up. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of overview you want. Um, not. So they're all pretty much um, like very content focused blog type themes. Um, I don't really know what kind of questions you like, what you want me to say, I don't know. Just what your um, design goals were and whether they're, you feel like they're suitable for child 
They're, I mean, they're all made with uh, all of the, the code that you would need to child theme for. Uh, so they're all technically able to be child themed at Mel Design. <laughs> Some of them are probably harder to child theme than others. So the, the first one that we did, Flounder, was uh, really like an experiment in using um, SAS in different color functions. So all the colors are actually generated off of a, like a base color palette. Um, yeah, this one's Flounder. So like each post format actually has a different set of colors and they're all like, they all revolve, revolve around like a same, uh, like an algorithm. So um, to edit Flounder, you'll probably want to actually use the source SAS um, to do that, but the other ones are pretty, you can just pick them up and do whatever. Although Umbra has a very similar yeah, deal Umbra's, too. Umbra is the same with colors. So um, for this one, it's using the color of the image you upload to create the, the color scheme around it. So that one would also probably be difficult to child theme, uh, but you can disable this. Uh, the, the latest theme that we um, have launched, Aventurine, um, is very child theme friendly. Uh -huh. So pretty easy to swap out colors in this one and whatnot. In the back? Yeah, I have a question about the idea of using SAS when developing. And I know the advantage of using SAS in, you know, for your CSS styles, but what I'm wondering is the idea of child theming. Like, where if somebody wants to do a child theme and you create it, you develop the theme using SAS, um, you know, are they going to have access to those source files? And, you know, I guess from the user standpoint, is it really advantageous? To use SAS in, from that so child theming, what I end up doing a lot is more about overriding specific bits. So whether the CSS was generated with SAS or not, um, it's still kind of the same overriding of whatever was generated. Um, so we don't put the SAS in, like we don't package up the SAS with the rest of our, our files. If you do want it, it's available on the GitHub. Um, like all of our all of our themes are on GitHub. So you could download the SAS if you wanted it. Um, but I don't know that, um, unless you're making drastic changes, that you really need access to the SAS. Yeah, the only problem with something like Fonder or um, Umbra, which are the two ones that you'll have with color, is that since it is generating um, a bunch of colors, that's just a crap ton of overriding. Like, you'd have to overwrite all the different colors, which is really annoying. Yeah. In that case, you could grab the source files from our GitHub and use them. I would say none of the other themes that matter for. So overlay you the mixes with the colors then? Yeah, it's um, so I it's think actually, it's a, I think it's actually less for Flounder. Flounder is less, but it's the same. It's the same deal. It's um, a mix in that that kind of styles the entire post based on a color you pass to it. So I just repeated that a few times. So we defined uh, like a one base color uh, for every post format, and then it generates like the sidebar color, the, um, yeah. the like text color, uh, the link colors based on that like one base color. Did you say you, you have a thing where it actually analyzed the picture you uploaded and got the color scheme from that? Yeah. Yeah, that's this one. So in this case, the default theme is this purple and gold. Yeah. Uh, but if you go to this page, which has a very silver image, uh, silver and blues, it's got the gray sidebar, uh, and then the, the, the navigation inherits from that. Um, and then the same thing here, if we go, I forget what color. Oh, purple. It ends up pulling out purple as the color. And then it offsets um, to get these, these little green buttons to match this color, too. And this one's going to be, I think, a red image. So orange. So it's got the, the orange sidebar and the brownish gray button. And then the blue is the, the kind of opposite that we pulled out from there. Do you want to talk about Finesse? Sure. Um, the, so there's a library in Jetpack, um, the plugin that kind of does everything, um, that will let you pull out, image, or pull out a single color from an image. So it analyzes the image and then gives you back a hex color. And I'm using that plus, again, Jetpack has a SAS library in it. So I'm packaging up part of my SAS so that it um, uses that variable or uses the color that it pulls from the image as a SAS variable to generate 
um, a style sheet. Yeah, I want this one. Uh, Oh, that's terrible. This stuff. All of this minified CSS is was generated using that image color and then SAS to pull out the style sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are using Jetpack, are you using your teams that recommending Jetpack? You can't require a plugin on, on the No, if you don't have Jetpack, you just don't get the colors. Yeah, the um, the purple that's on the homepage is the fallback color. But well, then there's also an option in the customizer to set a different base color. If you want your whole site to be another than that purple. Yeah, but you need a jetpack for the SAS there oh, too. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can also do the same thing. So right now it says there's this auto color posts um, up here, and then you can say that you want your default color to be something else, green very green and it's on the fly it's grabbing that uh, and doing that that sass this will override the purple on the home page but it won't override this it's only doing it here because we're in the customizer what's the direction of customizer Yeah, I think because it's a live preview of what you're changing, it makes a lot more sense to use it though. and then the regular settings API. I really enjoyed the new automatic uh, themes that you guys are producing. They're really, really cool. Um, it needs help in the ecosystem. <laughs> uh, I'm not part of the theme team, but I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. Okay. Yes, you're, you actually are on the theme team. I'm not technically on the theme team. Oh, I'm theme team, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> do themes. I do theme related. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you.